Hello, hello, everybody. Do we have anybody out there today? So far, today? Hello. Indeed we do. What up, Steve? Steve meet Steve. Also, I apologize. For some reason, my background music is not working right now. And I am troubleshooting that at the moment. So bear with me for a moment here. Hmm. <laughs> How are you doing today, Laura? How's it going? I know, right? Man, what a what a weird time for my uh EGM to break. It was working flawlessly all this time and then I got like an error right as I was going live. Hey, Amphi! Welcome back. Masha Welcome, welcome. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you liked it. Welcome to the stream. And Amphi Masha, how are you both doing today? Uh, I apologize, by the way, that it's a little dead silent right now in the background. I am uh, working on trying to figure out why my background music is not working. Uh, but for some reason, it doesn't seem to want to play through... OBS right now, but uh, but yeah, how are you guys doing? Um, welcome, welcome to the stream. <laughs> Your dancing was glorious, Alora. I enjoyed it. You and Fluffy were both great when you were here. Ah, uh, are you still, Amphi, are you still working on the uh, dilapidated fishing uh, build? Fishing house? Fish, fish house? Uh, I forget exactly how you phrased it last time. Um, okay. Hello, hello, Azzy. 
Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining. Man. How far along are you, Amphi? Like in terms of the that build? Are you uh Yeah, actually just kind of curious where you're at. I guess both slot wise but also maybe concept wise. So what we we're doing today, Alar, is, well, I, I had planned on uh, continuing to work on this, the sort of artist loft in here. Although I actually had a question for all of you guys in chat um, here at the beginning, because um, I had some thoughts. I, I was thinking since our last stream and trying to kind of think through what we're going to do next. Um, but hold on, let me, let me just see. Oh, hey, I appreciate that, Azzy. No worries. Uh, if I know people got work and overtimes and all kinds of stuff happening, so always appreciative if anyone even just wants to pop this open and just listen to me as a background white noise kind of thing. Imitation wooden skylights I still need. Oh, man. Oh, hey, people recognize people. Wonderful. Wooden skylights. Which ones are those? Uh, I can look this up. Is that? Oh, oh, it's the humongous, the humongous slanted things. Oh, man. Yeah, these are. These are awesome. I love this new item. What is going on? Oh, they do. I actually had not experimented with that, but that is actually amazing. So, so they do the bed meta thing and they're humongous. So amazing. Now, if they would only apply that to normal lofts and troop stages and other things that seem like they should do that, but they don't. <laughs> hey, Hawkeye. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, these, uh, this item is humongous, the skylight.
And like another really amazing thing about this is the fact that um, it doubles as like a floor, right? Like here, if I don't put it up high, um, it's, I guess, designed to go against a wall where you'd have, um, they're so, they're so huge. It's a little unruly to use them, but like, uh, yeah, like they go, they could go against the wall like that. And then you'd have, um, the little skylight looking through and they're perfect for that. If you want to make like an attic or something like that, but then they're also great if you just stick them on the floor and use them as fake flooring, which to be honest, I might actually even use in here or um, some other builds that I'm working on. Especially since they're wall mounted, so you can put them anywhere you want. Yeah, mega craning it into the floor, exactly. Um, and like, they're, because they're wall mounted, they're super duper easy to place, although they also means they snap, so you gotta do some weird stuff with that. Yeah, so... Um, Yes, yeah, so basically, there's like a, there are tricks to lower things even farther into the floor. So you can't naturally place some of these items. Like if you see like where it does orange there, right? It'll turn purple, and I can't place it naturally below that level. Um, but I could place escape this um, from my from inventory and put it like here, pretty low. And then uh, the thing Amphi's talking about is that you get this crazy thing where. Um, Unfortunately, I don't think I have all the items I need to do this here, but uh, basically you could place an item on another item. So for example, I'd put this here, right? I'd put the wooden loft here, or a lot of people use like wood, a wooden beam that's sticking out here. And then they'll stick more wooden beams on the, this thing itself, a little bit lower down on the actual item itself. And then they'll grab the whole stack of items and then shove the whole thing as close to the floor as possible. And because you have a bunch of items that are all um, stuck together and like all slightly positioned lower than each other, and you're only like technically moving the topmost item, the topmost item can't go through the floor, but everything that's attached to the top item that you're moving with it gets pushed into the floor. And, um, and so that's a way that people have found to... Uh, yeah, mega crane as it were, and like shove things into the floor much farther than you normally would be able to. So, little little tips of the trade there. So the thought, uh, um, also the thought I had here, did I miss anybody? By the way, if, if I missed something you said in chat or something, you can, you can always feel free to just like say it again. Um, and I'd be happy to answer it. Um, this is great, by the way. I mean, this is like, you guys are all chatting and this is like, this is so lively. This is great. And it's the one day that my freaking music cuts out. Gosh, it would be like that, huh? <clears throat> um, but, uh, okay, so a, th a thought I had had here um, from last time was we were talking about how, like, we, let me, let me, let me start this first, get this out of the way. Uh, so, okay, we are in an FC room right now, and we only have 100 item slots in here. So originally, right, I had shown that sketch that I had done. Um, for anybody who's new, maybe I, if you hadn't seen the sketch, let me let me th push that up right now. Okay. La 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 la. There you go. It's a karaoke, unarchived karaoke stream. Okay, so where does it go? Where did it go? Um, 
There we go. Okay. So bottom left corner here. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, so originally I had shown this sketch. For anybody new, I've shown this sketch um, early on in the streams. And uh, this is kind of what we're going for here, right? In this, in this loft build that we're doing right now. And this is, uh, yeah, so I, 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 like the, I like the layout, but there's a little piece of me that's wondering if, um, because of how intricate I, I wanted to make this aquascape, I, I might have, uh, this might be really, really tricky to actually get this looking really nice. Uh, so already we're at 40 out of 100. I, I mean, I think we can definitely like get the basic gist of this whole layout put in place. But I had a thought the other day, which is... Um, I have... I created um, a bar. It was one of the first things I built. Um, and we actually looked at it on the very first stream. And I've always kind of wanted to upgrade or redo that bar in my more modern design sensibility. And I realized that what I had in mind for upgrading that bar actually dovetails kind of nicely into the main piece that we've built here so far, which is this aquascape. And so when I was thinking about like, what should we be doing next on this stream? I was kind of getting a little stumped as to if I had any, if we had any, if I particularly had anything new that I thought I could bring to the table with the current thing that we were kind of developing here. Um, this is how my brain works, by the way, you know, I just have like this catalog of all these ideas, right? So I'm sometimes I'll be, ha you know, halfway through a build, or halfway through a section of a build and then realize, oh my gosh, wait, this is actually a perfect spot to pull in another idea that I may have originally had, like, from something else. So, yeah, right, see, that's all we need. Maybe we just need Fluffy in here, Alara. So, just to, so, I realize I'm just explaining. I can show this, though. Okay, so, <clears throat> part of the thing about building in here is a lot of times you have to kind of, you have, an, like, a grand ambition, and eventually you kind of have to rein in a bunch of your ideas because of like slot limitation and stuff so you either have two choices you can you can execute on every single one of your ideas but probably each one of those is going to be a little bit snubbed of something that it could be right but you can also nix a couple things like okay maybe we don't need three bars in here we only want one bar maybe we don't need a humongous dining room table with 20 chairs and food all over the place we only really need two little seating areas and just enough things on the table to make it look not empty, right? So, um, the thought that I had was, I've actually never shown this to anybody, but you're, you guys are about to be the first. But, the very first thing that I ever built in housing, ever, uh, was this. Um, oh, hold on was this. Oh, okay, hold on. Give it a second. There's a lot of stuff running on my computer right now. So. There we go, okay. So this was the very first thing that I ever built. I got an apartment when I was really new and I when first when I first was able to get an apartment, and this is the very first thing that I laid down after kind of looking around at some houses and kind of just like, yeah, taking a, taking a peek at like what people were doing. And the first thing I thought was like, oh man, it'd be kind of cool to build this like little bathhouse like thing. I think I was, um, I was thinking along the lines of like some kind of micro version of like the bathhouse in Spirited Away, which I mean, amazing movie from so many levels right i'm sure we have lots of uh ghibli ghibli fans in here ghibli ghibli studio ghibli studio ghibli uh does anyone know how exactly uh but um 
yeah, so I had that idea of like making this like bathhouse thing. And so this is actually the very first thing that I ever put down. And in, and eventually it got scrapped and um, I didn't really know where to go with it. And I wasn't really sure that the bathhouse specifically was where I wanted to go with it all. Harji Gi Ghibli. Right? Is that correct? Okay, Ghibli. All right. I think that's how I always generally pronounced it, but yeah, always good to just double check, right? Don't want to offend anybody here. Oh my god, how could he? Um, so, yeah, so this is the very first thing that I made, and then it eventually evolved into this. Which we took a look at on my very first stream, and this was this ended up being the very first build that I ever made. And part of the so part of the problem with this build that I've always had in my mind was it was fault to that thing I just talked about of I had all these ideas and I kind of tried to make them all happen, which meant that I never been quite satisfied with any uh, some of the little aspects of this. This popped into my brain when I was thinking about what to do next on this particular build. <clears throat> and I thought and I thought I'd ask you guys, would you like me to continue down the path that we kind of set out that initial sketch, right? And try to build out that little computer section and sort of loft area? Or should we pivot a little bit and keep the aquascape like the most prominent part, I think, that we've built so far and fuse that with this sort of bar idea and maybe make a more concentrated build um i was thinking from also from the perspective of i mentioned that what i want to do with this whole fc build and all the rooms and stuff is to create like a centralized like hangout hub for people both from these housing streams and eventually as i'm starting to get more into like also dj streams or music producing um and kind of just like gathering a bunch of awesome people the the dream here would be that i'm creating like a place that all those people that we've gathered and who talk on stream to each other and we talk together could all hang out um so i kind of was thinking like the artist loft thing that i was building i'm not sure like it's cool but i'm not sure if that's something that people would want to hang out in necessarily right i mean it um I, i'm not sure if that's as much a communal space as say building a bar in here Right. And that's also partially why I kind of pivoted a little bit in, in thought. Like, so I'm um, curious what you guys think. Curious what you guys think, chat. Um, should we, do you guys want to keep seeing me build out that, you know, the stuff that we've been talking about? Um, or would you like me to pivot a little bit from that and we can try building out this more, you know, um, like a, a really flushed out looking bar bar slash green wall thing For sure. <laughs> oh yes, we and we do love that. And I still can't get this dang music to freaking come through, um, which is honestly baffling me. Um, I really have no idea why. Why it wouldn't? <laughs> I thought, yeah. Uh, I tried. I mean, the version, the computer version of that Hawkeye. I I turned. All the pro I turned every program off except for the one that's streaming right now, um, but it does not seem to want to behave. Um, the the other final thing I can think of is quickly stopping the stream very quickly and just doing a quick restart. Um, 
uh, would you guys be okay or want me to just try that really quick? It would mean I'm just gone for like a minute or two. Uh, yeah, that would be, I'd, I'd be rebooting, but I'd have to just end the stream for a moment and then uh, come back in a, in a moment. Would everyone, can everyone, is everyone okay with that? <laughs> Could you guys last for like a few minutes while I quickly try that? Whew. Oh man, I know it's a big ask. I know it's a big ask. Just hang in here for like a minute. Go watch a, uh, go like watch the the Batman trailer. Um, I hear I've been hearing some good things. Uh, or something. Okay, I'm really gonna quickly end this then, and uh, we'll restart again. Uh, after I quickly restart my computer, hopefully nothing explodes or um, anything like that. Um, okay, okay. Apologies, really quick. Be right back. Hello again. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be, and I, I, I am genuinely baffled. Um, like, I have everything. Like, yeah, I don't know. I did all the steps that I've done every single time, but for some reason, the uh, I'm getting like an just no signal coming through um, into OBS. Very strange. Um, I am... Color me perplexed. <laughs> yeah exactly all right like go to uh you know what is it L chilled cow right what's that what's that one where it's like the, the anime girl and the cat on the desk at it's like at nighttime and it just plays like lo-fi music non-stop lo -f i mean or just i think it's i think it's like chilled cow or something like that youtube channel or any um yeah, any lo-fi music. Just drop that, drop that uh, in the background as if it were my own. You, I mean, heck, you can rock out to some hardcore death metal if you want in the background. Whatever, whatever strikes your fancy, um, whatever sets the mood. Uh, I do apologize. I will work on fixing that for next stream because I, I, I'm. If I think if I think of something to try, I'll try it here. But I'm completely stumped right now as to what's happening. Cause my like my microphone keeps reconnecting instantly, like normal, and yeah, the other stuff. I see all the signals. Like there's actually like a feed, a readout that I have here too. It it shows the signal going from Spotify over to this thing that funnels it over to OBS, or it should. Uh, but for some bizarre reason, yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I did say that we were going to talk about how to build the computer monitor at the end of last week's stream. And so I did already get all the materials and stuff that we talked about then. So let's at the very least build out the computer monitor and see where that puts us. Uh, if that kind of sparks this whole thing and we end up riding with it and, and be creating the thing, uh, the artist loft, wonderful. If we realize that that's just, it's just not quite working out the way that uh, maybe I had envisioned, uh, I might pivot and we might try converting this thing into more of like a bar communal kind of space. So, so what we talked about last time was this idea of creating a monitor there are i think there's like two camps of ways that people have created monitors generally speaking in this game so the first one is you take 
butterfly specimens, or basically any kind of um, like a picture frame or something, right? Something that has um, that would have detail on one side, but nothing on the back, right? And a picture frame is the natural thing for that. Um, or make a, you know, a, a poster, same thing, right? There's, there's no reason it would be printed on both sides. So you take something like this, and basically you're going to use the back of this. Right, so if I, if I just kind of plop one of these, uh, let's see, can I plop one here? Hold on, got to put it in storage, ah! Okay, so if I plop one down here, and I have a look at the back, right? It's blank on the back, All right? So this is what we want. Uh, and this becomes a monitor that is off effectively, but it gives, um, we can create the outline of a monitor, right? So it clearly just, it, it registers as a computer screen, even if it's effectively looks like it's non-functional or it's not on. So that we can have that type of screen that's pretty common in terms of using that method for either a computer screen or a TV, right? So the computer screen one would be like basically this, but flipped backwards, right? And then you get something that's about the size and about the proportions of a computer screen. You can make this bigger and you get a TV screen. There's uh, bigger maps and picture frames, which work a lot of people use for TVs. The other way though, to make a computer screen is to try to actually find a way to make a screen, like an actual light up screen. And so I, this one is the thing that came to mind last time we talked about, right? So this is the level checker item uh, or level checker replica, I should say, from Omega, the Omega raids. And is now also a hilarious mount where you get to get stuck inside the computer as it jiggles around and runs. Uh, but if you turn this on, boom, you get a glowing screen, right? And I just realized I've never checked this myself, but I think this does actually illuminate your character. So let's turn the lights down. Does this actually create an illumination effect? Uh, oh, not really, actually. Does it? No, I don't think so, huh? Does that not actually illuminate anything? Oh, big bummer, big sad. Um, yeah, so so for anybody who hasn't like maybe experimented around too much with like different types of lighting and stuff in Final, um, something that's kind of tricky and interesting to work with is that there are items in the game that look like they're lit up but they are actually just a texture that looks lit up, but they don't, they don't actually emit any light that spreads around the room. Uh, so this is one such example, right? Like my body's not actually lit up by anything here. Um, whereas if I stand here, boom, you can see my body gets lit up, right? This happens a bunch also with outside items and it bugs the crap out of me where you have like, there's like a really nice outdoor oriental pond and there's, a whole bunch of stuff in there. There's like a little waterfall, a little, uh, it's a deer scaring thing where it like goes, -dunk, -dunk. it fills with water and it tips over and it makes a little thunking sound and it's supposed to scare deer, uh, I believe, and other like animals and stuff. Um, but anyway, it also comes with a little lamp in that item. And for whatever reason, the lamp doesn't emit light. And so it kind of sucks that like, it's so perfect to put in gardens, and, and yet you don't get any actual light emitted onto the grass and stuff around it. So not lit in that case, Alara. But uh, yeah, so okay, well, Amphi has a great point, though. Um, we can totally just take this monitor and then hide a jellyfish lamp or some whatever we want that actually does emit light, and it will hopefully permeate through and still illuminate the character. Um, but it, this does give us that little nice glowing screen look. So this is like the other camp of camp that we could go in, right? We could try taking a computer screen like this and 
yeah, we could um, try to use this as our monitor. The thought I had too was, is that I have seen people use like these monitors by themselves, poking out of the walls. And I've also seen uh, it where they just put a bunch of them next to each other. Right. So a, I think, I think most people who have spent any time on the streaming internet have seen like, you know, people with like multiple screens, especially like an arrangement of maybe four or something, right? There's like a dashboard, all these different monitors that people have. So we could do that. We could have multiple screens or I was curious to see if you can angle these at all and get like a continuous looking screen. Right, that just looks like one giant monitor. See, like that. And then like we could get this curved screen maybe. Uh, and maybe we could get this like big widescreen monitor that's, that's illuminated though. There, something like that. Uh, I don't know if we can pull off putting it higher like if it was if there was one like above to make it taller uh the screen itself we could try that we could try floating this up a little bit and see if that works okay yeah, I think actually that looks that's looking kind of cool. Um, I wonder if we can do something with this, right? Okay, what I'm trying to do right now is um, like there's a little a little dip right here, right where it dimples, or I'm not really sure if that's the right term. Um, I'm trying to see if there's a position here where it that's not so noticeable. Because ideally, a computer screen does not have such... That would, I mean, that would look like an error in a computer screen, right? <laughs> if your computer screen has a little notch in the top, you'd be like, oh, I'm going to return this. So, uh, I wonder if there's a way we can do this where that's very minimal. Unfortunately, the whole screen is whole screen is a little bit like sloped in a way. Okay, I mean that's 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 not bad, right? That's if you squint, if you really look at it super closely, uh, it, you know you can definitely notice it. But that's pretty good, I would say. There was a point right there. There, there it is. There's there we go. Okay. That's pretty unnoticeable. Unless you're really looking for it. That there's like a little space there. And that kind of looks looks like a cyclops. <laughs> looks like a cyclops mask. Um Yeah, okay. How are we gonna but that is a good point. How will we hide the ugly parts? So hmm. And I'm sure, to be honest, I'm sure that's probably why some people don't bother with this method. Um, but here we go. Problem, problem solving hat on. Let's think about this. How could we do this? I think what we could do is try to put still like a frame behind this. Um, that is. Let's see. Okay, actually, wait. No, first, first things first. Why don't we just try putting a wall and just see at the, if there's a point where like most of its stuff would be hidden, right? So, turn this up. Let's grab this. Let's grab a stage panel. So it's a nice clean wall. So if we have, oh my gosh, man, 
you know some little tiny thing about this is it's so annoying to try to click the stage panel sometimes i don't know why it's so difficult but sometimes it's kind of it gets really frustrating but yeah so here we go like this is what i mean right where there's a lot of ugly bits and stuff but like if we do like that then there's not a whole lot we actually need to hide right and we can just make it seem like the computer screen is really close to the wall so yeah so if that was you know underneath like a desk here right like just to say it's in this pocket or something right and there's the desk kind of below i'd be sitting about here or something then you know, it would make sense that a lot of this would be, like, a lot of times you do see computer screens kind of tucked under or in, like, a sort of a fr uh, framed by stuff, right? So, in this case, we could we could pull something like that off where if it's kind of tucked inside a nook on a desk or in the corner of the room even where maybe a natural curve would happen anyway, like, that's another option, right, is the, the screen is kind of curved, but so is also, and so is also the wall, like, or the, some area of this thing, right? Um, is naturally curved anyway, in which case, yeah, you'd hide a lot of a lot of those screen parts that we don't really want to see. Okay, let's just, for example, oh gosh, died died stage panels. Um, yeah, let's just try right. So if we just angle this a tiny bit, right, we can angle this. And then grab, oh, I don't have another undyed one. Oh, well, that's fine. People get, you understand, you understand what we're going for here. Okay, so it'd be sort of like this. Okay, let's get a desk. All right, that'll do. Actually, wait, here we go. Hang the sideboard. Go to, the go to. Boom. Oh, actually, that's a little high. Was this a lot smaller or like shorter? Uh, not much. That's eh, not much better. Um, we would, we could lift up the, the monitor anyway. That's part of why I wanted it to be on the raised floor here was because then everything could be lifted up and hit minimum float height. Because that's a big issue in an apartment, is just hitting minimum float height. Because you can't, Since you can't push up anything from the floor. And not everything can be sunk. When we talked about that thing earlier, about how you can um, mega crane stuff into the floor, not everything works like that. So, doo -doo -doo. all right, you know what? I mean, just to get the idea, there we go. Uh, and then we picked up these last time, right? These could be like the monitor stand. Is that, is that what you call that? What do you call the... What do you call the the thing that the monitor is supported by? Is it the, the, ba the base? The stand? Okay. That makes sense. Something like that. So yeah, here we go. Uh, so we have like two options. This is a very common one, right? Where we have this uh, almost like a rook or something from chess. It's called the dragoon piece though, because I guess spear. Uh, so let's turn grid snap off. like three of these one two three and make that curve and then because this the lip of these is like is wider than the the rounded part of of those right it would if you i mean if you walk way back here and you really look you could be like aha gotcha i can see that it's sticking up the back but if you don't do that <laughs> if you don't intentionally try to break your immersion then it could maybe come across like it's just a curved monitor that's floating there 
And that's what we would what we could go for. Um Let's see. Oh, uh, just to also show too, right? So when we were looking at the Dragoon piece last time, um, I noticed also that there was this other piece. This is, I think it's called the Wyver Wyvern Wyvern piece. Um, looks like little dragon wings. But I thought, actually, that could be kind of interesting as like a double pronged monitor stand. So a very typical monitor stand would just be, you know, a stump that it kind of just holds up the monitor on, which is, I mean, that's fine. That's exactly how monitors look. But I think it could also be interesting if um, if this was pushed. So right now it's it's going to like disappear basically in here. But if this if the whole monitor was raised up, then you could see how you could just get that little bit of it kind of being like a little bit of a pronged stand, right? Where it splits, it V's out and it looks like the monitor is being held up by sort of. Not quite a claw, but, you know, it's kind of that vibe. Which could give it a little bit of a fun fantasy kind of feel uh, instead of just making it a straight computer monitor, right? That's true, actually, Amphi, yeah. Um, it could look more balanced like that. That's actually a good point. I hadn't thought about that. Um, but no, that, that does make sense, like that it wouldn't be so center heavy. It would somehow you know help distribute the weight in a way and even if that's not how real physics works it's fine right if, if that's what people think when they see it then that's okay um <laughs> the only thing about this though is this is getting this uh doing this is quite a lot of slots right like i mean we could so we could make a computer monitor with three slots i think two butterflies flip back two butterfly specimens the port you know little portrait things here flip both them backwards, and then put a stand. Boom, done. And that's three items. Um, the way we're kind of doing it here, I think it'll be much more interesting than just a standard monitor. Although, to be honest, a lot of people are already blown away by the standard monitor. I, was, I know I was when I first saw it. I thought that was awesome. And, um, but, you know, it, this could be something different that people may haven't seen. But this would now use, like, seven items, which, in a 100-slot build, the difference between three and seven items is actually, I mean, that, that adds up pretty quickly. Um, oh wait, no, that would be, is that right? Did I do my math correctly on that? Um, I think so. Oh yeah, internal dilemma for sure. Yeah, no, it's, it's, um, It's pretty, hmm. <laughs> yeah, and see, this is this is where I got in. I, I started thinking about this, right? Where of like, oh, like I think we there's like something kind of cool here we could do, but I also think that that will snub the rest of this particular build being in an FC room, feeling complete. Uh, where I, I think we'd end up kind of being like, well. All of this looks kind of okay, but no part really jumps out at you, you know? I think that was something that was a nice difference between what that first um, bar that I made and some of my earlier builds and then some of the more recent things I posted that I think probably a lot of you found me through, which was like the stage build or something, right? Where it's, there's a few things going on on the side, but for the most part, it's really like two major elements that everything's focused on. It's like the fake house wall, and the stage and there's like nothing else uh or there's not a whole lot else in there that detracts from either of those things so you really have like a big impact when you either look at the stage or you look at the fake house wall it really um all the slots are working in favor of creating those those moments and having those be the focal points and i think that that's something that is kind of as you as you put it, Amphi, the eternal dilemma with housing, right? Is do I want um do I want to create something really built out and detailed and immersive and stuff? Or do I want to fill all the space and or uh use all my my ideas? And I think that that's yeah, that's that's the eternal dilemma here.
But I think we could let's 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 just build out this monitor for the heck of it. Build out a little desk area here. Um, and at the very least, it's a screenshot, right? Like we can be like, cool, this is what we made. Fun stuff. Uh, and also now, sorry, it's not going to be up forever. Uh, so let's try this. Let's try the butterfly thing, right? That we just talked about. Can I grab them here? Oh God, yeah, I can. Nice. There we go. Beautiful. It's a work of modern art. We're done, I think. Let's pack it up. <clears throat> I mean, somewhere in a MoMA, MoMA type gallery, right? There is, there is this. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be like three butterflies just sticking on a wall. And that's it. No explanation, no nothing. And it's, but hot damn. You know, who am I to say? Okay. <laughs> Done. Housing stream over. I'm retired. I've peaked. It's this is it. You can't mess with perfection, you know what I'm saying? What am I doing here? Storeroom. Oh, really quick, I just thought of something. I will. Okay, I just had, sorry, I just had a, a thought about the stream here. There we go. For any people who pop in here in the future, um, or who watch the stream later, they can see that little thing and they can be, oh, okay, okay, I see what's going on. This isn't how it always is. Just because, from what I've heard, you know, people, I mean, understandably, people like jump in stream, different streams all the time and stuff. And if they come into a stream and it's like completely dead silent, they might be like, is nothing happening? What's going on? He's just staring at a wall. What? I don't understand. So uh, there you go. There's like a little tiny explanation. Let's see, how can we do this? Um, wanna utilize. Let's see how, how best to do this. Okay, I can see that this might be a little weird because of that ah, that dang metal lip around the the edge there um like it it's going to be kind of strange that we have a square corner like square corners and then a circular like bevel here on the inside um or oh, i think it, i think it will be strange oh well you know what let's not overthink this let's just try putting it in place and just see what happens right and i just realized I'm silly and I can't do it like that. <laughs> um, I need to flip it around. 
And I really should get a wood slat partition to do this instead so that I can actually see through this. I might just go buy one because that sounds like a really solid idea. Yeah, yeah, I would use the back. Alara, I, uh, I was, I was just derping for a moment there. Okay, let's, let's just move this down. Okay. This is very bulky and therefore very unwieldy and awkward, but uh that's kind of looking a little funky uh okay well let's give it a go hold on right um yeah okay that doesn't look as good as i thought it was gonna or it could look but you see what i was going for there right you could see how this could uh, you could create the curve and then kind of complete it out. Uh, we, we might as well complete it out just because we've come this far, right? Yeah, exactly. If all else fails, we rip the whole thing down, put up a wall and a, and a message board so people can praise us and just put the three butterflies on that wall and just leave it at that minimalist art gallery and we charge many millions of gil to view the masterpiece and i think that there's no way that that could go south because it's foolproof it's probably the greatest housing idea of all time might even be too powerful though it's probably why people are like okay i'm a modest person like i'm not gonna I don't want to be like that guy who like just dominates like that, but you know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like a lot of people like you either you either understand why it's obviously millions of gil or you just don't get it. You're just you're just not there, you know. So Who is this Satoshi person and why is he charging me? Oh, he's underground and you probably just wouldn't understand. Oh, wow. I got that almost the right height right from the get-go. Ha, ha, ha. Pay me. <clears throat> Definitely not a hat. What? What is like a... What is... Oh, uh, how does he... How does he say it? How does Bob... How does he do it? Um, I'm gonna paint a happy little tree right here or something. Happy, just a happy little accident. Get some titanium white. I need to work on my Bob Ross. Admittedly, he is he is an art legend. I I would probably pay many many monies to go watch him in a blank room, put butterflies on a wall. He's like the OG, he's like the OG art ASMR, you know? Absolutely. What a cool guy. Just so like unapologetically himself, you know, just doing his thing. And then like, yeah, I don't know. Just as such a way, a way of putting things that just makes it seem like, ah, oh, yeah, I can do that. You're right. It is all good. It is just happy little accident.
Are they doing that still? Is that is that a thing? Are they are they reruns, right? There's okay. Uh, is he he's passed away? Is he still alive? Is he still is he still painting? There's no way, right? He's <laughs> okay. Yeah, he passed. I, I'm sure. He, yeah. So everything that we see is all reruns. I mean, he must have hundreds. I don't know how how many. Did he have like some kind of super mega long running thing where he did a series of those? And is are, are there like hundreds or thousands of episodes of Bob Ross painting? Oh man, that looks super weird. Four hundred and three thirty. Jeez, good lord, what a guy! Absolute legend. I love how like just like his his whole vibe too is just so peaceful and welcoming, you know? Like you can just tell this guy's just like the most kind-hearted soul in existence. Oh, really? Wait, is that true? He was he was a, a military drill sergeant? I did not know that. Fun fact of the day. I have to be really careful about this. I cannot exit the housing menu because these things might snap. This is where having a wood slat to do this would have been much better. But I like making my life hard, so... That about right? Close enough. Oh no, it snapped. Okay, hold on. I was afraid of that. There we go. It's all snapped. Yes! Okay, perfect. Done. Ta da! Again, okay, not not quite like as magical as I thought it might be, but hey, you know what? It's I've never seen someone do that before, so um you, let's see. We turn this, we take this and color it steel since we can't color the we can't color the level checker, but we can color the butterflies. And normally they'd be painted black, which is an option. But I wonder if we paint them, you know, steely, if it'll look a little more natural, like it's supposed to belong with the um, with the level checker. Right, like that. And then that looks less maybe jarring. Like, I mean, that that looks pretty like obviously like metal poking out of wood. But if we do, let's see, does black look better? I guess black hides stuff, but um, Yeah, like that. That kind of looks like it's, you know. I so I realize the butterfly specimens are a little too high next to the rest of the uh, the lip here. This is much thinner than this top part, which is gonna bug the crap out of me if we actually keep this. But it's not something we need to fuss about right now since we're not even sure that it's going to stand right here. 
but this is the kind of little thing that I cannot let go in the long run. Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, that could be interesting. Slate, slate gray? And I think that's from an NPC. We get slate gray. Oh, does the stand also die the same way? Oh, the stand dies darker. So you need to go even lighter. Like ash gray, maybe? Snow white, ash gray. Maybe ash gray. One ash gray, three slate grays. Let's try that. Actually, I'll get two ash grays because of the other piece. So, wait, Azzy, wh wherever you read that, this thing about him being a drill sergeant, I'm, I'm just curious about this. Like, so did, was he a drill sergeant, saw some stuff in the war, and was like, you know what? Life ain't about this. We gotta, I gotta put some good in the world. And I was so, I was so angry and, and sad. But now, I've found peace. And I must, I must paint. My people need me. Um, or... Like, did, did it explain, like, why he, he 180 like that? Although, okay, now that I'm thinking about it, I could also see how a lot of people who are something in the military end up picking up a hobby like painting down the road, right? Like, it's a, I mean, that's really intense, being in the military. Um, like, shout out, shout out to the brave men and women who, who go, for, who, who do that, um, and I could see how after all of that, you would say, like, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to, like, be in places with high-strung energy and stuff. I really need something of zen. Oops, that's not my apartment. That's not where I parked my car. Uh, what? Okay. Oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like, uh, okay, I mean, uh, that sounds a little dark, but I mean, I do feel like a lot of times people who are extremely compassionate and who are very, like, have that genuine energy, like, I mean, sometimes, sometimes you're just born like that, right? I mean, but sometimes it stems from I've seen some dark stuff and I and I woke me up to like how important and precious like life is and and you know how uh and how like I don't want to put that energy out in the world anymore and so then they are like really genuine and like really really passionate about putting peaceful energy out into the world and helping people and stuff um so that's that's interesting. Like I had no idea. I mean, I always assumed Bob Ross probably had like an interesting background. He wasn't just like, I don't know, uh, like just to do that, to to be that kind of guy, to have that kind of energy. I always assumed like, yeah, there's probably like an interesting story behind him. But I, it's never occurred to me to really look into like his his background. So that's really that's great. Housing. Final 14 Housing and Art History 101. We should rename it. And then package it and sell it. Because that's what you do, right? Buy my online course now for the low price of Fifty nine ninety nine. I don't know. It's a steal. As in, I steal your money. Um.
Okay. Okay, so that's kind of like what I was going for. Um, again, I, I'm... I don't think that that's... This is, this is a great A example of, of, of having an idea, you try it, and sometimes you, it's not really a loss, because now, like, you know, yeah, it just doesn't turn out quite how you thought it would, and in the end, like, I'd rather... I know personally, I'm someone who would rather rebuild something a hundred times until I'm happy with it. And it's something that I'm like really proud of and, and, and I personally want to stand by um, than just kind of let it be. But I think that it is important to uh, find the hundred ways not how not to make a light bulb, uh, so to say. Uh, which is like, so, I mean, someone is actually welcome to look this up right now. Uh, but like, so I, I, I think that I've kind of heard sometimes people say when they talk about invention is that... Thomas Edison, you know, he failed, like, I think he was like a hundred or a thousand times or something. I think it was a hundred, this is an article throughout. He said it. He failed like a hundred times to make the light bulb, and then it worked. But nobody cares about the hundred or like 99 times that he failed. Um, and, okay, whether or not that actual number is true, I do think that that is something that really stuck with me, is that idea of that when you're doing art, a lot of times, there you go, 10,000 ways not to make, okay, this is like 10,000 hours thing too, right? I mean, um, yeah, it, it, that, that works. 10,000 hours to get good at anything, right? Um, but I think like another way to frame that too is a lot of times like 10,000 ways to not make something. Um, Cause I think like when people say like 10,000 hours, sometimes, I feel like that makes people think that they can just literally sit at something for 10,000 hours and then they will magically be good or something. But I, I mean, you will probably be better than if you'd never tried it at all, right? But I don't know if that that's quite captures what that really means. Um, or it, it captures part of the story, right? Um, it does take a lot of time and dedication. But I think that the part, like for me personally, that I've always really... Uh, felt was the most important is that idea of that you're going to be aiming at something that you think about like an idea and and you're going to have all these ideas of like how you think it'll work and you're going to try some of them and especially at the start but even like in the middle and near the end a lot of them are just not going to work they either will flat out fail or they'll be like eh, it's kind of what i wanted but it's a little scuffed somehow. And so many people get so discouraged when that happens, especially if it's like, you know, if you're intent, like, okay, 10, let's just say 10,000 ways to not, to not make a light bulb. And if you fail 8,000 times, I mean, and there isn't really a lot of success, a lot of people will start being like, yo, man, like, what are you doing? Like, you've like, you've been at this for like a couple years now and you've failed like 8,000 times on this. Like, I just, time to go time to go get a desk job man or something right or whatever i don't know or like something um and if you need to get if you need to pay the bills then you need to do, you need to do what you got to do but like um or you know feed your family and that kind of thing but i think that something that i i, I wished would be more commonly embraced is that idea of that like a lot of art is going to be you failing or quote unquote failing, or just your idea is not really panning out the way that you thought they would along the way. And that is fine. It's more like, it's just as important to find all the ways in like in the, our case, it's in my opinion, this is the first time I've ever tried to build a computer screen in Final Fantasy. So yeah, like it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it, but that's, that's okay. Like I now know one method that doesn't quite work. And I can either tweak this method or try something completely different. Um, but over time, I build up this catalog of things that I know don't work. And so uh, I won't do them again. Or I will know uh, then that, you know, these two items don't really work together. Or that these two items really do work together. 
Um, so like something here, right? The screen, the glowy part did really work well. It's just that maybe it doesn't quite uh, work out when you bring it to a larger monitor sense as well. But like if we were to build this into a space station per se, right? Like uh, like Alara, she did a space station build. It's, it's phenomenal, by the way. If you guys want to look at a really wonderful uh, space station build, check out Alara's um, Twitter. And she has one that I really, really liked. Um, so like, yeah, in that kind of in that kind of build, if you ever do a space station in the future, bam, now you have an idea for like a widescreen computer to monitor in there, right? Um, even though I don't think it's going to quite fit in what we're doing here. So um, that was a long tangent, but all to... Yeah, that was a long tangent. But so to say, I think that's an important thing I want to... I wanna, talk about on the stream um and kind of commonly bring up is is that idea of that like that the part that's really not very glamorous and like nobody likes to talk or like understandably nobody wants to talk about is like all the hours spent banging your head against the wall and shit's not working you know um and like the people will say like how is this going and you don't really have anything to report and that's like a really tough spot to be in, right? When people are asking, especially over like a decent period of time, hey, like, how's it going? Or like, how's the this or that going? And sometimes you don't really have anything that like, it didn't, like, nothing's really worked out. And so it's a bit tricky to answer that, right? Um, but I think that like, uh, I've been trying to to be better about thinking like, no, like, uh, it's so far it's not working. But, um, but I've been trying a lot of things and it's, it's stepping me closer to figuring out the one way to make a light bulb, so to say, right? And okay, I realized too, we didn't try just putting a screen behind here, just in case. Let's just see. Let's just see what happens if you put a wall here, right? Right about there. Boom. Okay. Uh, we still get that problem with the monitor stand kind of not really showing. Maybe we need the fatter one, right? I think it should be really... If we turn the lights down, let's see what happens. Pro tip, <laughs> sometimes if things aren't looking that great, you just turn the lights off and like, bam, it looks amazing. Um, looks really dark, but it looks amazing. Yeah, I mean, there, there could be ways to hide those side things. Or you can say like, it's a CRT, was it CRT? CRT TV? Those huge bulky ones from back in the day. You know, like yeah, you know what? We, we didn't we didn't invented flat screens yet in here. So yeah, there you go. Okay, well that's kind of that's something kind of interesting. There you go, guys. There's like a a kind of <laughs> CRT widescreen. <laughs> Uh, a monitor um, concept. Woohoo! We did it. I'm gonna take. I'll, I'll take a screenshot just because, like, why not, right? Oh, I should probably should hide the the wyvern wyvern uh, piece here. Smile. Okay. Oh, there's like the window grating. That's going to be confusing for people in the screenshot, but... Holy crap, that's a lot of light. Okay.
All right. Well, okay. So this also used up. Let's see. Is that? Oh, well, I guess because we do have the the desk and everything. So that's like ten slots. So we're like already like halfway to full, roughly in the build. Admittedly, there's a lot of stuff scattered on the floor, but um. Yeah. Okay. I I kind of want to. I kind of want to see what happens if we really just hone in on this this back wall kind of thing. Um, and if we end up thinking like, wow, we do actually do have a lot of slots left, then we can try to see if it can really flush out some of the other areas. But I think that a pivot to this will end up making a much more striking piece overall that I think will be something that we can be much happier with. Um, oh, you know, I, okay, I really, I should also point this out. So, uh, just to make sure I give some credit where credit's due here, um, the, the monitor idea of like, so the, we're experimenting with the, the level checkers, but the idea with the butterflies and the chest piece thing, I don't know if this is the first time this has ever was done like this, but the, the one that I, the build that I'm referencing is from Sint from HGXAV, um, since slap on Twitter. Uh, and I just want to quickly like pop up his build on this just so it's, so people can see like what I was referencing. And because I want to just give, you know, send a little shout out that way. Okay, so he is, Sint, yeah, Sint Slap, I think it's at Sint Slap on Twitter, and so he made a dorm room, which I highly recommend you go check it out. You can look it up, like, if you look up 14 housing dorm room, I'm pretty sure his will be one of the first things that pops up on Google. Uh, so here you go. This is it. Um. Well, sorry, that's that's a piece of it. There's there's more he made a whole dorm room. Like he he took I don't know if it's a medium or what size of building, but it's an incredible build. It's extremely detailed and it looks spot on like a dorm room. It's actually nuts. Um Yeah, so so this is what I was uh referencing though, right? Was like this idea of having this computer desk. I mean, look at that. Oh my God. Right. It's, there's a mon it's a monitor. And so in his case, I believe in the break it down, he, it's like probably it's maybe two here, two for like the black part, but like to get the trim on the edge here, that's, I think like six more that he just moved ever so slightly out from the center. And it's like another one here. Another one just to fill the little middle portion here because it's wider. Another one here. And then you had to do it on this here too. So this whole thing would be, what is that? Eight, eight slots, eight, nine uh, with, with, the, with the little piece down there. And then he actually, I mean, has like even the desktop right there down in the bottom, which is just crazy. I mean, I've seen, uh, there's a desktop, there's the little, the iPhone. He has some clutter, trash can, cream st cream stew pot right there that's been consumed completely for a trash can. Very creative. Uh, alcohol bottle, because, I mean, you know, college dorm, what, what are you going to do, right? Um, and there's, like, some other things that I don't think he has it here, but, like, I've seen people use the new table mat as, like, a keyboard or, like, a you know, a mouse pad or something. And... Uh, I think like way back there was like someone who put like a mouse, they made a mouse, um, on the desk by taking the Namazu NPC and like pushing its head a little tiny, tiny bit through the desk. It, so his, since desk here is completely hollow or you can see the bottom, which is great, I think, uh, in its, in its own way. But I think the one that I had seen there was they had like a, you know, like maybe the, I think it was. 
maybe it was the desk, a side uh, dresser or something like that here. And they hit a Namazu person in here and the little head poked out the top and it looked like the curved like apple mouse kind of vibe, you know, like a very simple rounded curved mouse. It was, it was great. Lots of slots, but now his house has... Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, since, like, since latest build is the craziest looking space station. It looks like... Well, there's like two... So far, I've mostly seen people, when it comes to space stations, do two, like, two vibes. One is the kind of more, like, alien... Prometheus, uh, cyberpunky even like kind of vibe where it's like very uh, dark metal, right? Like dark steel looking stuff, Garlean or dark steel looking, and it it kind of has that very like greedy industrial vibe. And then Synth like completely like flipped that on its head and like did this like bright white space station build. Um, if you look if you look him up on Twitter at Oh, it's not synth slap. It's slap synth. I apologize. Twitter.com slash slap synth. And yeah, he made like this crazy. It, it kind of reminds me of like something you'd see in Star Wars. Because um, like a lot of Star Wars spaceships have that very white and bright, but still very textured looking interior, right? But they have that look like the, I think it's like, you know, like Princess Leia's spaceship in A New Hope, right? It's got that. It's like spacey future, but it's all white inside instead of the typical like chrome and blue lights and stuff. Um, that's what it reminded me of. It, but it's also totally its own thing. It's like a very unique looking build. And I think uh, that blew a lot of people's minds. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, I, Al Alara and Amphi. I, I think you guys probably both saw that. And just so crazy. I mean, uh, as you as um, as you said, Anthony, yeah, the HGX IV people are the main people. I should, say. Uh, you know, okay, all people of it are 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 wonderful. Um, but I will say, in particular, the the people who really are the main broadcasters for their podcast um, are also extremely extremely good at their craft. And pretty much probably a huge inspiration for every single housing person across the board. Out of curiosity, when did you guys all get into housing? And and like when and like how? How did you find housing? You know, I'm just kind of curious, like, because it's not, it's not necessary for the game, right? It, it's not something that you have to do. And it's not something that you, um, that not everyone even wants to do or, or, or can do in some sense. Uh, so just kind of curious, like, yeah, how did, how did some of you guys all find your way into the housing scene? And I, I guess I'll, like, I'll go slightly first here of like that I um I mean I heard from people oh hey you can get like an apartment and stuff and I got an apartment and I started fiddling around with some things and I I didn't really think that much of it at first cuz I thought like oh it's kind of cool but it's kind of limited in what you can do and stuff um but then I thought to Google and like one of the very first things that I s happened to Google was Nora Rappi who's a Japanese designer his Doman Dogwood Town, I think it's called. I think that's the official name. But basically, it's if you look up Final Fantasy housing Japanese town, you'll it should be one of the top searches. It's by Nora Nora Rappi. Um, I think he has a couple diff. His name varies a little bit based off of which social he's on. But basically, that build is just like a a whole Japanese town built in a single large, and it's completely insane. To this day, I mean, it's like several years old now, but it still blows. Like, I mean, it just it blows people's mind when they see that. Um, it still blows my mind that he did that, and that's really what got me into housing. Is 
me seeing that build and going, oh my God. Oh, wow. I, I think there's a lot more of this than I, I initially thought. And um, yeah, so then I, I really started investigating and I found like housing snap and then I found HGXIV and everything. And from there, I mean, it just, yeah, it became this whole thing. In some ways changed my life, uh, but yeah. Let's see. Mm. Oh yeah, you got you got shown the same thing, Amphi? Yeah. Yeah, it's like one of those things, right, where like it's so good and so like, oh wow, I never like okay, I've seen people make a a really cool looking bar, but like I never thought like a whole townscape? And it's like really believable too, especially like the wide shots of it. It just makes you really think like, oh wow, I really uh, underestimate maybe what is possible in this. The end of Nation Oh, so when you, Alora, when you say like you were here at the very start, do you mean like, from the the moment that they released the pos like housing in general into the game. Oh yeah, the big starry night sky. Yes, yeah, so, like like similar to the one that I have in the, the stage build, Amphi. Actually, I don't know if you can see it in the screenshots I took. I it, it doesn't really come across that well in screenshots, right? I mean, but like if you um, in that build, the stage one that I I posted, the outdoor stage, I put a starry sky above, and I'm curious if that was like a thing that was one of the early on things that was discovered is, is how to do the starry sky thing with the, uh, what is it? Fool's treasure. Um, undersea, undersea spoils. I believe it's, it's the, yeah. Undersea spoils. That's okay. Let's, let me really quickly. Oh God, I didn't mean to click that. Ah, the worst. Uh, when you click the wrong, when you, when you s return to storage the wrong item that you floated up. Although it's not that hard to float up, but like, uh. you know, if you know, if you know, if you know, you know, and you go, uh. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'm just gonna take this down because I. We can always put this back up. Uh, I'll take a screenshot, which is kind of like what I typically do along as I build stuff. Is I just grab some screenshots here and there, just to document kind of stuff that I made and like where it was at. But I think I want to clear some room so that we can actually see this. So, let's see how are we how are we doing on time? Oh, we're okay. Carbuncle lanterns. Okay, yeah, I've seen. Yeah, carbuncle lanterns are definitely another cool way to go. And the nice thing about, I think, maybe both the undersea spoils and the carbuncle lanterns is that the effect works not just on a ceiling, but also like on the walls. Like if you wanted to do a, a diorama, so to speak, right, where you're looking out to a night scenery, uh, horizontally speaking, and you could like add stars to the background there. Okay, wait really quick, let's... I kind of just... I just want to mock up this alternate layout and see how this feels. Because I think it'll be kind of cool.
this and we're gonna go Uh, how do I? Okay, I think what was the thing you do? You place an item. How did? Okay, in case anyone didn't know, right? How to disconnect a bunch of items, or like con disconnect like a loft from everything? Place an item on it. I think this is the method, right? You put an item. It's stuck to it as well. Go in here. Find the item. Remove the item or store it rather. And you can grab the item or the, the thing it's all stuck to. And now everything else is frozen in place all at once. Whoa, what's that? What's that cursed little flip there? Do you guys see that? A little dot. That's that's not a fly. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, it, that's one of those things, right? The the unsticking everything. There's a couple. There's a couple glitches that I don't use very frequently, and when I do, I have to pause for a moment and like think. Okay, how do I do this again? Okay. So How do we want to do this? Uh, what am I thinking? Uh, I'm blanking. Hold on. Partition. Okay. How do I not have any partition? Um, No, yeah, they are. Okay. That's weird. There we go. Going to roughly place these down. Um, okay, positioning, how far back? One grid snap in front of the line right there. There we go, one grid snap. Okay, and... Off center, but that's fine. And I think I want a. I want to try putting the concrete wall back from what I did that other bar. Um, to remind. Okay, so we're pivoting. We're pivoting a bit from that original idea that we talked about because I think this is going to be a lot stronger. So. We were originally going to do this, um, which I think is a little too many things. Although, you know, maybe we can still work them out into other areas of stuff. But I think what I'm now kind of shifting towards is a combination of the current aquarium that we have, which is kind of like building off of this idea. Uh, this sort of general structure and layout. And it's kind of like a combination of this with the aquarium and an update to this idea that I had. Or this is a build that I made, right? Um, which is like this sort of industrial bar, uh, greenery bar wall inside a microbrew. So we're going to take those out. I think the best 
hopefully the best elements of that kind of stuff and kind of put them all together. And if you are curious to see this apartment build, by the way, this this bar that I'm talking about, it is still up. Um, you can see actually on my Twitter, it's the very first thing that I posted. And I don't actually have that many things posted, so it won't take very long to scroll. And this one is open that you can just go visit anytime. It's in an apartment. Where am I going? Where am I going? Uh, Hakonin, right. Okay. Uh, and I'm going out here because I'm going to get a blank glade partition. Because I want to try using the new Garlean concrete. Actually, really quick, let's just double check. Which... Do any of these have a particular weird lip or anything? So when it comes to the partitions, oh right, interactive, blank. Okay, blank Riviera. Oh right, we can't see the top. Oh god, crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh. Okay, um, blank, okay, let's just take a look at this, uh, what I'm looking at is the top and the bottom here, since, since we're kind of limited in what we can hide in an apartment, or a FC room, I kind of wanted to see if there, which area at the top there will work for us best, so, like, That one could be nice. It's got a little bit of a Hingen touch to it, which is which works with the rest of our builds. This one has a little bit of that, like a little lip there hanging out. Uh, I don't really know if that's quite what we want either. Um, though that that's just this this thing is so loud. This this design, the Glade one, similar thing. It's nice and subtle, and it does match with the rest of the walls here. And there's this. Uh, okay, I'm gonna grab a hanging one and a glade one, because then we can just decide once we actually see them in action. Blank Hingen and a blank glade. Okay, so now if we have the blank. Uh, Glade here, and the Blank Hingen, let's just see which one, Concrete Wall, there we go, Concrete Wall, um, okay, so we look at our reference there, the old bar that I made, we'll probably float this up off the ground, honestly, just because a lot of it will be blocked, um anyway we just kind of want to be able to get this texture across so what so what i'm thinking here though is um what we actually need is three of these right we need three walls that are going to be the concrete walls Uh, to line the back wall here, right? So we need two on the sides of the main bar area, one in the center. 
So the one in the center is probably going to be floated up because of just how much stuff is going on here. Um, especially like down here below. We'll push it up so that way the concrete really shows through. But on the sides here, we probably are going to just have them sitting down in the floor. So I think the side ones definitely should be glade partitions because then they continue the wall here. So it feels like a natural wall. Otherwise, we're going to get some really weird... We're going to have to jump through hoops just to make this look like it is a continuous thing. So I think we're going to go here. Let's use this storeroom. What did we say? Um, one click in front of... One click in front of the line there. Bam, right there. One click in front of the line. Okay, so we have, okay, one click in front of the line there. Wait, what? What? Excuse me? Is that... Is that... <laughs> Wait, why? It... Am I doing something wrong? What's going on here? Does everyone see that? Oh my god. What in the... Why, why would they do this? Wait, surely I'm mistaken. I feel like I've done this before and I've placed walls and it's not mismatched like this. Am I... Am I crazy? What is happening? Is it always like this? Does anyone... Okay, wait. <laughs> I'm kind of going a little crazy right now. What? What is... Do you guys see what I'm talking? Okay, I, I I feel like I just need to like very clearly point it out so I do. Can I point this up? Does everyone see what I'm? Gosh, it's not. Okay, right here. Like. Why? Why does this line match? And yet this does not. Yeah, it's <laughs> 0 out of 10 uninstalling. What the heck? Yeah, this is my, um, something I say, like, with, like, it's half jokingly, but half in a little frustration to friends, is that, like, I mean... Endless, endless, endless praise to to Final Fantasy as a whole, and like even like the housing stuff. Like they didn't have to do any of this technically, right? I mean, they could have just given us nothing. That being said, it's just like so many of the items, um, and even like the new ones as they add them. Like I always like have this saying of like it's nine out of ten. Like so many of the items are like nine out of ten. Like so damn near perfect. Like except for the last tenth is just one thing that's super weird. Like, super bizarre. Like, why would you do this? <laughs> right. Like, like, in this case, they have the wall, the housing wall, and I think that these housing walls have been exactly like this from the dawn of time. And then you made a partition that imitates the housing wall, right but the okay so great beautiful and i can like change the wallpaper and it'll all line up like look it lines up on the bottom and everything but then what why why not just put this down a little few pixels i i don't it just it's so baffling to me I, uh, there's like several other items that are many other items actually that are like this where it's like completely perfect like it's beautifully modeled it functions perfectly except like a little corner is not textured or like a little part that's clearly like these two items are supposed to match together and they just don't quite line up and you're like wait what <laughs> why would you why would you spend all the time to make this item uh so amazing in every other regard and then just 
not just tidy up that tiny, tiny little bit. Baffles me. The dang partitions with the wooden door. <laughs> which part the which partition are you guys talking about? The door partitions? Um are you talking about like the sliding door ones? Or are you talking about the actual door ones? Like these these doors? No, right? You're talking about the uh paper partition stuff, I think, probably. Like this. Cause I don't you you can't dye the oriental one, right? Yeah, you can't dye the oriental one, but like this one you can dye. Glade door partition. Oh, okay. Uh Oh man. Okay, wait, does it so does this? Let's see, wait, does this the top part line up though? Nope. Okay, so the top, <laughs> the little little notch in the top part doesn't line up, and then what else does it? What doesn't line up? Like this doesn't line up with the door itself. Oh, I see. Like the whole. Okay, hold on. Now I have. Now I'm so curious. Um. It's lighter than the natural wall. Okay, I did see that, and I wasn't sure if that was just my eyes playing tricks. Okay, so. Oh yeah, I see it. I see that up there. You can see where it intersects, and it's like a little like lighter in tone. Like that right there. And uh and you can see how it, it changes color. Yeah, okay, right? See, so like I mean, you know, nine out of ten, but like the last tenth is like almost irredeemable sometimes in the last like in some sense. Yeah, like, when I say, like, 9 to 10, it's not rating. I mean, like, if there were 10 things happening on an item, you know what I mean? It's like, uh... Oh, it's also the color, the color of the wall itself, huh? Like, like, just this whole thing, too, huh? Not just the top part, but, like, this whole thing all around the door. Is that what you're saying, too, right? Which just, yeah, which just feels like, <laughs> did, who, did no one QA this? Like, did, who, who did this? You know? Um, or something that, like, feels like you would be able to fix it? I don't know how the game is developed, to be honest. Um, like, in terms of, uh... Yeah, I, I don't know the way it's coded and everything. I don't pretend to know all the complexities of all the code, but it does seem a little like, huh? Couldn't I, I understand if it popped, if it came out and someone was like, oh, dang, our team didn't talk to the other team and like it's a little off color. But like that feels like the kind of thing that you'd want to go in and just touch up really quickly. But like same thing with like that, that little, uh, this little part right here, right? Like this not quite lining up. Feels like the kind of thing that it's not like you would need to invest millions of dollars into fixing that, I don't think. I, I could be wrong, but like, I think this could be like, hey, summer intern person guy, uh, you know, I got a neat side project for you. I just need you to nudge this pixel down like 
half a thing. Oh man. Okay, as he sent me an image in in Discord. I see what you mean. Jesus. So that's with the lights off too, right? Is so does that mean that so what I was gonna actually suggest too was like if I that's something that I've I actually uh utilize a lot is this I is um if you turn the lights either to one or especially if you turn them to zero and then only use lights placed within the actual house, it can really help even out a bunch of coloring and texture issues. Because um like I've used that a whole bunch of times to make things look like metal or like look like a different substance even. And if you turn the if you turn the lights on, you'll see it's this crazy mismatch of all kinds of textures and like subtle differences. But you turn the lights all the way down and you have like almost no lighting in it. And then you just put a single light emitting lantern in the corner and it throws light across the whole collection of items and it fuses them all together basically. Because all you're seeing is a little bit of the color temperature from the light itself um, that, that's being emitted from that light. And then, like, the shadows and stuff. And that's at light one. So I'm curious, like, uh, I'm curious if you try it at light zero and then use artificial lighting if that changes anything. Um, because I've noticed that that helps a lot. That's a, that's I would say just a big recommendation to anybody here who who ever gets into like extreme customization of of items in terms of like you know mashing like fifty together to make like a, a whole kitchen or something. And if like you find a lot of your textures and all that stuff is just like all over the place, turn your lights all the way off and try seeing if you can just use a few lights in the kitchen to illuminate it, and it will probably solve all of those issues. But it also means that it's like always nighttime in your build, right? I mean, and for for like my case, that's fine. Um, actually, you know what? Let's let's take a look at how that works out in like my builds. Um, what am I doing? Uh, I went into housing menu. I'm silly. Here we go. Private chambers. Actually, I realize I am not on the right character to change the lighting in that room, but. Um, okay, so I, I could show that at a different time. Let's, let's not bog it down. But yeah, low light, no light is like, it's such a mood in this game. And just, I, I don't know, just, I, it's also just the way the lighting works, right? I think like, uh, something that starts to become more and more apparent as you try to get really specific about your builds is the way that light gets thrown around the room because it makes a huge difference, right? I mean, anybody who's done any photography or interior design or something like that knows this, where the lighting of a room like completely changes the mood. And, and also it, it not only changes the mood, but also in the case of builds where you think people want to take photos in them and stuff too, or, um, you know, or just even be there with their friends and stuff for an extended period of time. Something I think about a lot is like trying to make sure the characters look really nice because there's certain lights that emit really harsh lighting and it makes these really gross looking shadows on your character's face that just don't look very flattering. So like, this is of course personal preference, but like I think like when, when things are like really dark and there's only like some certain collection of, like certain light sources have this really nice effect where it's very smooth on the skin and it's very flattering looking, right? Like it's not, I'm not very well illuminated here, but the face is quite nice overall. There's not a lot of like really crazy shadows, but like some of the light sources in the game and during some of the, oh my God, some of the cutscenes, um, there's like these really harsh lights that just get cast. This is not even doing it that bad. In the in rooms, I've noticed it a lot. The in rooms, there's like some positions that you can stand in some of the in rooms that are just like, your character looks like a monster. <laughs> uh and then all you do is like turn away from the light or something like that and bam it's fine but uh yeah putting lights really low in a build really helps being able to control that kind of thing i think so that's kind of nice so
Okay, what we're going for... Nope. Oh yeah, so it's the concrete wall. Yeah, so I think what we're going to have here... <laughs> you know, whatever you want to be. That's the beauty of the game. If you want to be a monster, you can be a monster. If you want to be uh, the hero, warrior of light, warrior of darkness, whatever you want to be, you know? Okay. So yeah, I think we're going to... Let's see, we're going to go with this. We're going to do... the heck? Why didn't it work? Okay. It's going to be like this. Uh, and then there would be... What do I have to work with here? Um... Actually, I think we're going to raise this up. Okay, not that high, but we're going to raise this up a bit. Uh, da, da, da. And then we will have, we'll have a bartender or someone right there. And then I think this whole thing will be raised up too. Uh, and if this whole thing is raised up, we still can like have the nice perfect shot of the aquarium and stuff. And then there will be bottles and stuff hanging out down here. And probably some more greenery popping off the sides here, but also that this concrete look going all around. And I think that will really centralize it. So when you walk in, bam, you're hit with this view of the full bar and the full display that we have going on here. And I think, you know, instead of building out with the computer and the desk and everything here, I think if we really centralize along here, we can really make something that looks spectacular and is it serves like a very specific purpose and it's really good at delivering on that purpose and i think that's often the way to go when you're making builds here so um yeah oh you're a reaper okay laura <laughs> yeah there you go yeah why not right you know I mean, just see when you, when you gotta reap, you gotta reap. It is what it is. Carefully, you might reap what you sow, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm liking this. I'm already liking this feeling a little bit better. Uh, I feel like I'm much. I'm feeling much more confident that we could make something that looks really, really cool uh, if we focus in. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna grab a bunch, some different items because I real all the stuff I have stocked here, a lot of this. I don't think it's gonna quite work, so I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to grab some different kinds of items. 
but we will keep working on that in the future. I'm just had a thought of here about like creating like a little um breakpoint here on the sides just so it feels like a bit more of a natural transition between the side bits and the little raised bit in the middle here. God, that's going to bug. Now that I've seen this little corner thing, oh my god, this little disconnect thing, I'm going to it's going to bug me forever. Uh Maybe we just yeah, let's just pack up our bags now, guys. Let's just go home. Forget it. <laughs> We're just We're going to do the butterfly, the 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 MoMA butterfly thing and and call it a call it a decade. Call me call me uh call me a 7.0. A pill yeah, just just drop a random pillar here, right? No, I mean I've definitely I've definitely played a lot with that like this, just like and then boom, you know. Problem solved. Can't see a thing. Okay, actually, so bef uh, oh, let's see. Oh my god, Ampy. So many times. So, so many times. The amount of times that I have ripped a whole section down because I realized something wasn't lining up by like a couple pixels or something, and nobody, actually basically nobody, would ever see it. You know, uh, but, but I would. And it would bug the crap out of me every single time. So. But yeah. Yeah, I was talking. Actually, I, I remember when I first met Alora and we were talking about this too. And I, and I said the same. Th I said the same thing you said, Ampy, where it's like. Like some people like praise the that like, oh, yeah, but you like, I, I wish I was a perfectionist like you. And like, you know, you, your stuff is so perfect. Like, yes. But I also really admire people who are on the flip side of that who, I mean, whether it's laziness or like some people are just like, they know like that it doesn't, that it's more important to a lot of times get something shipped and out the door than necessarily fuss for 10 times as long to make it perfect when nobody actually cares. Um, or like when it's like, like it's the diminishing returns thing, right? Like a lot of times you have to decide whether, okay, this will double or triple my dev time to finesse this thing but is it already good enough that like the end audience is like this they're perfectly fine with this they're perfectly fine that this doesn't quite line up or that this button isn't the most beautiful button they've ever seen because that's not why they're using it um you know like i think about a lot of apps are like this like if you've ever used probably like apps that like i don't know your doctor's hospital or something use it or something right like it'll be like a really okay I, i'm gonna just say it, it, usually they look pretty bad right like if you if you've been like on let's just say you know the facebook's and the the apple-y kind of stuff and you see how nice those all are and then you go on like a a typical like corporate website especially like some you know some some areas like for example medical where it doesn't really like design isn't really a paramount there it matters that they can find the information and like i think that's like a pretty good example where yeah like it they people when they're looking for their medical record don't care if you spend ten thousand hours to perfect the buttons on the website they just need to know it's a button and it needs to be really really obvious it's a button right and so like that's an example where like it would be foolish to tell your dev team to hyper fixate on making the button perfect when that's not really the point they need to worry about other stuff uh but and like in a like alora you know and that type of mindset sometimes is very useful for that kind of thing um it where 
they just can build a bunch of stuff. And I've seen actually plenty of people outpace perfectionists, right? In terms of like getting better at something because they just turn out so much work. And they're, they're not focused on micro minutia details, but they will make 10 times the 10 or like even more times the amount of work in the same time frame that the perfectionist does. And because they're just doing so many things, they actually end up learning a lot more and a lot faster than someone who's agonizing over every little thing, right? So. Yeah, you and me both, Amphi. We can learn together. I think, um, I mean, that's, and I think that's one of the, actually one of the things that I wanted to, why, one of the reasons I wanted to stream um, cause like a lot of everything I've built so far, I've built just in a, in like a, my own little bubble, like late at night or something like oh, completely alone, listening to my own music, not really talking to anybody. And that does work for some things. Like it's very good for concentration. And I do love that for its own reasons, but something that I, I really wanted to try to get better on through streaming and stuff was just running with some ideas, right. And committing down to them. And also feeling like that there is a little bit of that, like accountability to like create, like, uh, cause you know, cause you know, we're creating a program here. We're trying to, you know, put stuff out there. And if I just stand here every single episode and barely move anything except like a pixel, then that's not really going to be very, the, the best, I would say, uh, the most watchable. And so I want to find a balance, right? I don't think I want to lose the perfectionist side completely, but I... I definitely want this to be like a space where like, you know, if like Alora finds herself, you know, wanting a little bit more learning about how to make things more detailed or like how to like, you know, adjust things and fine tune stuff, then like we can give two cents on that. And on the flip side, you know, we need people like Laura and like other folks where we're like, oh, I'm, I'm stuck on this build and I just can't get this one thing right. And they just say, run with just, just, Put a fork in it, man, and just send it out. It's fine. It looks great. It's good. It, you know, it's, it's, this is awesome already. And sometimes you need that person to tell you, no, no, this is already awesome. Like what you just had there, you're overthinking it. You're, in fact, you're overproducing this. It already looks great. So, yeah. There you go. Yes. Yes, teach us your ways, oh lazy sensei. Couch Potato Sensei, what is your wisdom? <laughs> but there's like a total zen in that actually, right? I mean, I think on the flip side, some like, like, I think like sometimes that the lazy, like quote unquote lazy is like, I think it's often said in kind of like a, oh, like it's not supposed to be something, you're not supposed to be lazy. But like, I, I do think a lot of times like, Sometimes lazy energy is just relaxed energy, right? Like, it's just like, oh, I'm not like stressed out about this, you know? Like, it's just not, it's just not worth getting all worked up about. Um, or it's not worth like causing like a big fuss in my life about. And I think that, uh, to be honest, a lot of people are probably more on the high strung, wound too tight, ah, you know, kind of vibe. So it's good to have those moments where you think, yeah, you know what? I don't need to take this so seriously. I don't need to fuss about this so much, right? So. <laughs> hey, that's fine. That's fine, Laura. You got sounds like you got some of the energy to share, so that's cool. You know, actually, also here as we're wrapping up, I need to get, okay, I need to get better at like building and talking at the same time. <laughs> uh, but since we're sort of at the end, near the end of our time here, I had just a, like a, some thoughts and, and kind of wanted to get your guys' opinions on stuff. So, um, so I've been uh, looking into building out a Discord right to kind of create like a little community hub i mean obviously there's not that many of us in here right now but like in theory ideally eventually we start gathering some more people 
And um, in case you didn't know, I also uh, have started sim recently uh, doing DJ streams as well. And I plan to kind of eventually get into some other little um, avenues of creativity and art projects and stuff here. And so like, uh, I wanted to create a Discord that becomes kind of a hub for, um, I guess, myself as an artist, but it also becomes the hub for the community that we're kind of gathering, right? Yeah, Laura, I'm coming after you, okay? Um, and like, yeah, so I, I was kind of, to be honest, I mean, I only started getting into Discords because I started Final here in 2020, and, and so my range and knowledge of like Discords is still a little bit new and small. Um, I haven't joined that many. So I was wondering, like, when it comes to, like, having an artist's Discord, uh, that is not purely for promoting that artist's work. It's also, like, meant to be, like, a community hub for the people who are their fans and also who just want to talk about the similar topics that we talked about on stream. Um, if it starts to become kind of varied, right? Like, for example, I will have some audience that that will follow me because I DJ, Right, so it'll be like you know some more like RP focus, maybe nightlife kind of minded people, and then there's going to be people who like maybe specifically want like the comfy vibe of, you know, comfy chill vibe of the housing streams where it's just like sort of mutual creative hangout, and then I think there's also like the person who's kind of in between, which I also I really want to gather a group of these kind of people who like my. The thing that really excites me about a lot of this is I like building spaces that then we can use. Um, like, uh, I, yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of like what I want is create, like I'm going to build a bar and then we're going to like host stuff in the bar, uh, like with all the people that we gathering on the chat and on the stream and through DJ sets and stuff. We're going to, you know, in that stage, the outdoor stage, like I want to have barding, bard events not barding events. I don't want to show up. We can't show up with chocobo bardings in there. That'd be cool though, uh, too. Maybe that's a separate thing. But bard concerts. Um, I already have some bards friends in mind who have said that you know they'd be interested in helping throw concerts there. And so I want it to become this whole like social kind of hub thing. But I was wondering what you guys thought about like should that become like separate discords or is it in in like a nightlife? discord and then a housing discord but in my brain that feels like that's going to be a lot to police like multiple discords and like um you know run them so is it enough to just have one discord where when you arrive there's like the role reactions and stuff and there will be a role reaction that says you know uh you know one role react that you read the rules and then two is like choose which like area what are your areas of interest right and the role reactions would be like housing and then nightlife, and then maybe like, I don't know, art, general art, or like world building or something. Um, and then just from that alone, right, it means that like, uh, yes, someone could jump into all of them and cause chaos, we would just kick them or something. But then that way, people could, could, would only see the areas that they're interested in. So if you only check the housing one, my housing, my discord would end up looking like basic information and events list. And then, you know, the housing section. But if you checked all of them, then you would see all the nightlife stuff, you'd see all the housing stuff, and you could opt in for stuff about all of them. Okay. Yeah, roll. Roll, yeah, yeah. So, so I understand, like, what roll reactions work. And I just want, I was kind of wondering, like, is that enough? Right? Is that does that help people, um, you know, choose enough where they feel like a Discord doesn't get too chaotic or crazy? Um, I think specifically because right, like this energy and the energy of nightlife and like partying and you know clubby energy and that kind of stuff is very very different. And I just like I didn't want to create a space that people would feel like, oh my god, like what the hell's going on over there right and like other people are like what the heck is that over there right um but if you've if you guys have kind of collectively seen that like yeah people are pretty good about policing that kind of thing in discord and they just like they'll roll react with what they want and they're 
that's enough, right? That, that's exactly what you should be doing. Then I'm going to run with that. And we can have that be like the first iteration of the Discord is something like that. <laughs> You're, yes. We need, we need someone to cause a little bit of chaos to have there be some energy in there, Laura. So that's good. As long as you follow the rules and guidelines, then chaos within those guidelines can be welcome. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool, cool though. Yeah, I'll I'll ask a few a few more friends and stuff too, but um that's good. Okay, I'm glad that at least I was I I was especially worried about this vibe of people being concerned about the nightlife people because i think like nightlife people might would probably be like i mean they're the ones just be who would be like very you know party energy and stuff like that and so i just didn't i wanted to make sure that like you folks who who really enjoy like this you know kind of comfy housing vibe felt like role reactions would be enough to kind of probably keep um keep the energy and the vibe that you want within your section of, of where you'd want to interact in that kind of a discord. And then, uh, and what I'm hearing, it sounds like, sounds like, yeah, that sounds like a good first, first bet. And we can always adjust as it goes kind of thing. Um, and then like, okay, the second question I had too, uh, was when it comes to like, uh, posting, like when I go live and stuff, um, I kind of just posted on like, fashion discord there's like a little channel that says like live streams and i just post in there and then i've also uh just like posted to my twitter but i don't tag anything because am i correct in thinking right that like it it's kind of probably taboo or like not something you should do where you tag like 14 housing in a in a post that's like just about hey i'm gonna stream 14 housing um like i was debating about would that would people be like, oh yeah, like you should tag that because that's how I would find you, you know, if, if you didn't happen to see one of my builds being posted or is the energy about the hashtags on like Twitter and stuff really like, it really should be about specifically when people are talking on builds, like finished builds or like works in progress. Like it's not really a place to talk about streams and that kind of stuff, really, even if it is related to, related to the housing builds. I actually that's a good point I don't know that I ever looked up specifically like 14 streamers uh but that would be maybe worth looking into yeah because I'm only I've only I, I'm like you Amphi I mean I I posted a handful of things like last year and then I was basically like didn't post anything for an entire year until recently when I really just started kicking this off and I wanted to kind of get back into it um, so we're talking about, so then now we're talking on Twitter. Um, and actually like, I guess my question was kind of like, so the discord thing, I think I got an answer there. I think what I have planned for my initial launch of discord, I think is solid and it's going to work. And I'm just glad to hear that you guys sound like you'd be comfortable. Now, the second question I had was when it comes to promoting or like, just like getting people to even know that. I have a housing stream here because I don't think there's a lot of housing streams out there right now. Um, I wasn't really sure where to like advertise that or like post that. Like who, where would people see that? And I didn't, I'm not going to like flood general chat or something of HGXAV. I mean, I don't think that's the right place. Um, and I'm like not like a super connected with all of the socials kind of person at the moment. So I was, thought I'd, thought I'd ask people you know, should I be posting to Twitter 
Right now I post to Twitter and I just say, hey, I'm going to go live. Should I post to Twitter though and put the put like a single tag of like 14 housing? Or is that kind of taboo because most times people use that tag, 14 housing, is I'm sharing a build of 14 housing, not like come watch my Twitter. Or uh, sorry, watch my stream, right? I mean... Like, I wouldn't want to be seen as, like, the person who diluted the, you know, or, like, you know, like, like, you know, I don't know, when you start so suddenly seeing Facebook ads and stuff, like, started seeing more and more of those pop up or Instagram ads and stuff, and you're like, ah, oh, man, like, I wouldn't want it to be seen as, like, the person who instigated that kind of culture of a spam of streams or anything, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't spam it. I just wasn't sure if that was, like, a thing, like, people did in the past or anything, and people were like, no, don't do that, you know? <laughs> um, and same with, like, I don't know, posting to Reddit, or... I've never really used Reddit, actually, but, like, I know that there's... I think there's a big housing community on Reddit and stuff, too. Um, so, I don't know, just... Should I be a little more, like, aggressive with, like, just, like, posting stuff and, like... Not aggressive, I should say, but, like, just... You know, not afraid to just say, hey, I'm, I'm doing this thing and like use some of the little tags and everything. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, yeah, OK, maybe I'll give it a go. I mean, I guess the worst that happens is especially if like HGX people or something step up and are like, yo. We kind of don't want people to do that. Like, all right, yeah, I can back off. But like, I mean, I guess worth giving it a shot. Because um, like, yeah, right now it goes out and it's just like the 30 or so people who follow me. And by the way, I'm very thankful for all of you. So, I mean, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I guess I was just kind of wondering uh, to gather more potential future friends for us, you know? How would that, how could that go? Keep it to once per two weeks. Okay. Okay, see, there. this is, this is exactly the kind of info I wanted to, to know about, right? Like, so, okay. So, like, maybe at the, you know, top of the, like, either twice a month or like even just at the top of the month i if i kind of have some idea of like maybe what i'm going to be doing within that month i could just drop like a uh you know a little blurb and then a little graphic or something like that that just kind of says hey these are probably my hours these are going to be my weekly hours for the next month and here's some of the topics that we're probably going to talk about if you're interested come check it out kind of thing As you, yes, uh, so I'm, I'm figuring out a lot of how to do all of this in real time. Uh, so I appreciate all the, any feedback and stuff. Um, it's one of the reasons I also want to get the Discord up so we can start having like a feedback section and also uh, just have like a more centralized place that we can talk even outside stream. Uh, and that way... Yeah, we can we can all communicate there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I would love to have a section where um like some of the things I was thinking about for like the Discord um were apart from like obvious obvious ones like, you know, some showcase and like general chatting and that kind of stuff is like a feedback section both regarding to the stream but also people could yeah post their builds and say like hey does anyone have any thoughts about how this is looking or you know like help help section to be honest i mean hgxav does have um does have a section like that already too so you, you could also check out there too hgxav and fashion discord they have a lot of people who are really good about that but of course hey you know uh, maybe you have a specific group of people a subgroup of people in the community that are in my discord for some reason and not there um or 
who knows, right? Like maybe you like like if you're like me and you like building clubs and bars for the nightlife people, it's kind of cool to maybe have their perspective on that too. Then, right? Like some outside perspective that's not just the housing people. Um, and then I also thought like it'd be cool to have show notes. So like I'll, we something that's happened the last several streams is we end up kind of like talking about like a whole bunch of uh, really awesome people's work and like reference material and you know even like your guys's builds that you're working on are just released and i think it'd be pretty cool to have like a read only section but that like has like show notes from each week or each day um that we stream and then that way you know if i say during the stream like oh yeah sint had that one build and alora you know you had that space build then i could say at the end of each stream like if you want to know the links to any of the things that i referenced in here i'm going to have it in the show notes in that section and then that way people could, you know, always go back and, and see like all those things we talked about and be like, oh yeah, that's the link to that app and that build and this reference material and da, 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 da. Since I, um, I think it's not, I'm realizing it's not that practical to always be able to show like a huge att attribution thing on every single thing I show on screen dream or talk about and everything so yeah i would love to have like that that section to give credit where credit's due and then also yeah be a reference point for people cool this is great thank you guys so much no this is um my overthinking mind has been back and forth about all these things and like oh god i don't know like is that too much and blah, blah, blah. so this is great i'm uh, i'm so happy to have just some some other input and some thoughts uh so it sounds like uh, i'm on the right track so that'll be that'll be cool hopefully i'm gonna try to hopefully have that by maybe by next monday that'll be cool what is that llr is that a brief? Sorry, I'm, I'm blanking. Hmm. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah, I mean, I, I would hope that people would be understanding. Uh, I make... <laughs> I am I am definitely like I'll be the first to admit that I don't know everything here. I am learning on the fly, as seen by the fact that my background music uh has been AFK. Uh I think it DC'd. <laughs> Reinstalling. Um yeah, I don't know. Uh so But yeah, um Yeah, I'm a big I'm a big proponent of continual improvement. So constantly like trying to improve things all over the place across this stream. And it's, so far it's been great. I mean, I've learned so much. I had to learn how to make all these overlays and how to make the functionality and all this stuff. <laughs> so Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe I'll I'll message you in like Discord or something after that. And Amphi, uh and actually anyone, you know, also in here too who would like I mean add me, you can add me on Discord too. Um I think I'm let me double check. Actually, and Amphi is your Twitter. Let's see. What is your Twitter? I don't know. Just want to make sure I don't like lose people. Um, who am I? Okay, yeah. Uh, in case anyone does just want to add me on Discord uh, too, so we can chat out of here, especially before I actually get Discord up and running properly. Uh, uh, I'm. It's just Satoshi number 6882 so 
Oh, cool. Okay, cool. Oh, nice. Wow, you've been friends all this time. You didn't even know it. Ain't that... Ain't that, ain't that wonderful. <laughs> I love it. There we go. Azzy's got me. I realize I, should, I realize I can type too. I kind of forget about that too sometimes. I forget that like I'm allowed. I can also type stuff out too. Uh, but yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. I, I'm going to work on having at least a first version for like, especially like just the few of us here who are kind of getting us all started. Um, I want to get the Discord up and running and a version of it. And also, uh, in case any of you here like electronic music or just want to hang out some more in a more like upbeat or like energetic vibe uh, atmosphere um i'll be posting this on on tw uh, twitter and everything but um i'm going to be doing a dj set next thursday at the nightclub that i built ichi nightclub i think it's next thursday march 10th i think it's next thursday i could be wrong about that but yeah uh, i believe it's next thursday um so that's like yet another reason I want to get like my Discord up and running. Uh, if anyone in here is interested in you know coming out to that and hanging out, um, it'll be decidedly more high energy than this, uh, but hopefully still a fun time. Uh, I really try to make like take people on like a musical journey, so to say, on my DJ sets. Um, so if you're open to hearing some new. Uh, grooving sounds and electronic kind of music space. Uh, you know, I hope, hope you want to come check that out. Because uh, I think, I mean, what's this, like, uh, <laughs> I say that as my background music's not working this time, but like, you know, I think uh, half the battle is building a beautiful space and the other half is like the vibe you fill it with, right? Um, and I think music is such a big part of that. And so that's why as an artist, that's those are like two big areas that I really am passionate about, like developing uh, stuff for you guys in is musical experience, um, which gets into, you know, DJ sets. It'll it'll eventually be like I want to produce my own background music for this stream as well as stuff I'd perform even live. Um, and then also, um, you know, creating the, the actual venues that we perform in like creating the stages, creating the clubs, creating the bars that we hang out in. And I think like that would be so cool, you know, if we have this kind of whole little micro cosm that we get to all hang out in um, and I can help create a vibe in all of it. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll just sing. I have to work on my la uh, la 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 singing voice and stuff. And next time, next time I'll just beatbox the whole time. I just have like a record like thirty seconds of myself like beatboxing, and I'll just put it on loop, and then that'll be the background noise. And it definitely will not come across as scuffed or anything like that. In fact, probably could put the recording in the MoMA along with those butterflies. Double the double our income, you know. These bills ain't gonna fund themselves. So anyway, um, I wanted to wrap this up. I went, we went a little over today, uh, but that's okay. I mean, uh, this has been so much fun. Um, I really enjoyed chatting with you guys, and I hope you enjoyed everything. I again apologize with the background music. I, I. I'm going to figure it out. I will figure it out and we'll have it back for next time. Uh, but thank you guys all so much for, for chatting so much and being so active. It was, it was a lot of fun just, just talking about all kinds of stuff. Uh, even though we didn't actually necessarily do that much building, I think that was just, I think it was a great time anyway. We talked about a lot of really cool stuff. And yeah, thank you guys all so much for coming Coming to the stream. Hey, wonderful. I'm glad if you had fun. If you had a good time and you enjoyed yourself, that's that's what counts. Tell your friends. Bring your friends next time. Let people know. I'll try to do a bit more outreach to, you know, for more stuff. 
But um, yeah, I really appreciate all you guys and your support. If anyone else in here ha is is lurking and has been silent, uh, hello, thank you for coming so so much to the stream. I hope you enjoyed it uh, in the background there. And uh, if you haven't followed me already, uh, love it if you follow. Would love it if you could come if you want to come hang out with us in the future. Follow me on Twitter. That's probably where it'll always be the latest updates on everything. Uh, and certainly where I'll post like future builds and, you know, uh, screenshots and those kinds of things. Uh, Discord coming soon. And I'll be back next week. Same, same time slots. Or I'm aiming to do same time slots. Um, yeah, does this, does these, this work pretty well for, for everybody, right? Four to, four to six PM PST, seven to nine EST both Mondays and Wednesdays. It's trying to figure out a time that kind of like could get East Coast and West Coast audiences uh, okay to come check it out. Um, so thinking we'll just run with this for a little while until uh, unless I hear some major feedback of a different time slot that sounds like it'd work way better. But yeah. Yeah, Laura, what the heck? <laughs> now you guys have been great. Uh, thank you all so much for keeping it lively in here. And, uh, yeah, I'll hopefully see you guys all next week. Next Monday, we'll return, uh, and do some more building. I think I'm going to think through a little more of what we want to do on this. So that way, uh, I, I'll try to make this, get these a little bit more focused, like, I know that we want to we're keep it loosey goosey overall, but like, uh, I definitely want to try to get a little bit more like building, building uh, on future stuff. So, thank you, thank you. Have a great rest of night, great rest of your week, and I will talk to you guys soon. Good game, good game. <laughs> Thanks, fun party indeed, everybody. Good night.